Hi, this is Tony Glenn again, and I'm going to talk a little bit today about the Ken Burns effect, which is panning and scaling of photos in a kind of a documentary type feel, and doing this in Adobe Premiere Pro. I've previously done this same sort of tutorial, but I'm sort of embarrassed by that tutorial because I kind of did it off the cuff uh, with a handheld camera. One of my friends is trying to show her how to do the Ken Burns effect. I'm going to try to do a better job this time. So what I have, I have an Adobe Premiere Pro window open here, and forgive me for not having some kind of fancy uh, zoom in type program or something here. I like to just be able to point to the screen and show you things. So I've, I've imported some um, some images. These are all photos that are bigger than 1080p. This is a 1080p window over here. And so I have 1920 pixels this wide, 1080 this way, and all these pictures are much larger than that. Most of them around 4200 pixels wide. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select these images and I'm going to pull them down onto the timeline. So now I have all these photos here, and they are much larger than 1920 by 1080. The reason that's important is because that gives you extra pixels to be able to zoom and pan, move the things around. So the way you do this, I like to click this individually on the, there's a way to group do this as well, but I'm going to show you now this the individual way. We're going to click on one of these images on the timeline. And ideally, you'd be at the very beginning of the timeline, or at the very beginning of where the image starts. And because we're going to put a keyframe in here, we're going to go up under effects controls at the top. If that's not, if it might be on source, but go to effects controls. And then we're going to click the little arrow here beside motion. And that's going to give us some options. I'm going to put a keyframe for position. I'm going to put a keyframe for scale. And the way I do that is by clicking on these little, uh, these little stopwatch like things here. Then I'm going to twirl down the arrows beside these and twirl down that one, twirl down this one. So I've opened it up. Now let's say I want this image over here of a rock outcropping in the Linville Gorge. This is actually called the Chimneys area here. Let's make this a little bigger so we can see it and it looks prettier. Let's say that I want that to start at that size and zoom out. Okay, so right now I have the scale of it at 100%, but I want to zoom out. So I'm going to pull this into the, this little, you know, little thing here where the timeline is. Little controller here. This is your this is your current. This is where you're located in the piece of video in time. So I have this thing set for seven seconds for each of these. I'm going to go to the end here, and I'm going to zoom in. Now there's a way I can click all the way to the end. You see right here, this is the last frame, the last frame for that piece of video. And now I'm going to go up here to scale, and I'm going to scale it back by pulling this little button here. So what I've just told this to do, I've told it over time. To scale out. Now let's pull this, this pull uh, scale back out here a little bit so I can pull every bit of this. So we can see what I have is a, if I hit play, I'm hit the space bar to play, that will pa uh, pull out very nice and slowly. So let's say I want to pan one too. Okay, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to go over to the next edit. By my, see, I can go over here to this. I can click on this little uh, go to the next edit point page down. It's right over here. You got the play. You got the next button. To step forward right, and you got this one. That's going to take me to the very first uh, frame of this uh, video here, or not video, but of this photo here. I'm going to click on it. Same thing. I'm going to go to motion up here at the top, twirl it down, put a position and scale here, twirl both of those down just for, uh, to, for ease of doing this. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pre-scale this one back a little bit. And you know what? I'd like for this to move uh, like left to right. So I, there's two ways I can do this. I can go up here over, over position. And I can get here where I see my 960. The first one is your horizontal, see? And so I'm going to do I'm going to do this this way. I'm going to let it come from this portion of the gorge here. Then I'm going to pull the thing over here. Actually, I can go over here and hit Next Edit again, see? And that brings me to the next picture. But then I can step backward one frame. And that brings me to the very end of that. So I hit uh, this button to go all the way to Next Edit. Then I click this one to step back one frame to the left. Now, I would like for this thing to be more over this way when it ends. You know what? I wouldn't mind if it's just a little bit more panned out. So I'm going to scale it out just a little bit more, too. So let's see what that looks like when we do that edit. I'm going to hit the space bar again to play. And here we see we're panning left to right, and we're also pulling out a little bit as we go. Uh, another little trick you can do, let's do this waterfall here that I have. So I'm going to once again click over here to go to the next edit. I'm on the first frame of that. I'm going to click on it in the timeline. I'm going to go up here, motion, position, scale, twirl down the controls. This time I'm going to maybe let's zoom in a little bit, okay? So I'm going to pull it out pretty good ways. And so here's the waterfall I'm, I'm shooting. 
and I'm going to zoom in maybe up here toward this top part. So I'm going to go to my uh, next edit again. I'm going to click over here, go to the next edit point. I'm going to back it up one frame. And then what I'm going to do on this one, I'm going to, uh, rather than, oh, first of all, we're going to zoom in. So I'm going to go ahead and change my zoom, my scale up. I'm at 45.1 now. I'm going to go to about 58. Now, rather than going up here and messing around with this, which is a horizontal vertical, you can just click in the window here and pull this baby like that right there. Look at that. So now if I go back, you can see what we have. So that piece of video zooms in just like that. Now, uh, you can actually go ahead and make it zoom one way and then the other. Let's go back on this uh, piece of video here, this waterfall I have, to the first frame of that. And let's uh, do a motion on this one. Click on it, motion, position and scale, twirl them both down again. And this one, let's start smaller again. Let's go here. Maybe we'll start right about here. And you know what? I'm going to grab, I'm going to use my other trick. I'm going to pull this over here without having to go up here and, and mess with these. You can do these very precise measurements right here. Let's say I want to zigzag with this one. So you can imagine what I'm going to do. So I'm going to put another keyframe in at some point. I'm going to go, I'm going to pull to about halfway in here, somewhere along in this area. And then I'm going to reposition. Let's say I reposition down to right here. And I scale back a little bit maybe to this point right here. And then maybe I want to look at something down here. Now, what I have done, I've actually put a keyframe. You can see these little keyframes in here. It's what these little diamond looking things are with white and black on it. So I have a point that that's going to go to. It's going to stop there. Then I'm going to go back over here toward the end again. And you know what? I think I want to see more about what's down here in the water. And you know what? I might zoom in on that a little bit. So let's zoom in on that little portion there. Now let's watch what happens here. See that? I'm going to go, I'm going to hit the space bar, I'm going out this way, and then I can zig back down and totally change direction right there. So I have other photos here. Maybe the last thing that I'll show is, let's go ahead and just copy the motion from one of these. Let's say that, for instance, you've got a pan left, a pan right, a pan left, a pan right, and you've got like, maybe you've got a hundred pictures that you want to do something with this. All you have to do is really this. If, you, if you've got maybe a a preset pan left, a preset pan right that you like, or zoom, pan, whatever. You can click on one of these. And uh, like I just clicked on this one right here. I'm going to go up to motion and click on motion. I'm going to do a control C. Control C to copy. So I just copied the motion of that. And I have three more images here. I'm going to paste. I'm going to say control. I'm gonna, what I, do, I did, I clicked on this in the timeline. I'm clicking up here. I'm going to say control V. Now, I have just applied that same effect. I'm going to go here, click on this one, and go here, click in the window, control V. And go here on this last one, click here, control V. And now what I've done is I've applied the Ken Burns effect to all those images right there. Very nice. And you did it fast. So there we go. That's a quick little tutorial to show you just how the how flexible it is in Adobe Premiere to do the Ken Burns pan and scale effect. Hope you like it, and uh, uh, check out some more of my other videos. There are going to be a, a whole little series here of what I do to make uh, Premiere Pro quick and easy. Thanks.